Hey, good day, everyone. My name is Bert Salazar. Welcome to the Bert Salazar Show. This is uh, episode 189. And today we're going to be talking about the tax resolution planning process. So for millions and millions of Americans that owe money to the IRS, uh, in January of 2024, the IRS sent send out 5 million collection letters. And there's more and many more millions to come. So it's important that if you owe money to the IRS, so you keep a lookout for those letters because they're going to be coming to you and you got to be able to do something about it. So what I'd like to do today is kind of give you an overview of what it looks like whenever you get ready to engage a firm that specializes in tax resolution planning. Now, not every firm uh, has the ability to do this because you have to have a firm and you have to have um, uh, specialists that understand the tax law. But most important that they also understand the IRS process of collection because it's quite uh, convoluted and, and very difficult to navigate through. So I'm going to give you a little bit as to what we do in our firm. Uh, we're Gable's tax planning group, and we're a virtual firm, which gives us the ability because of the fact that we're licensed in all 50 states, we have the ability to assist our clients uh, whenever, wherever they're, they're at uh, in the uh, U.S. territory. So it really doesn't matter whether you happen to be in Hawaii, you happen to be in California, Florida, New York, uh, the middle of the country, Texas, it doesn't matter. We have the ability to help you. Now, not only are we a tax planning firm, but we're also a tax resolution firm. And we solve all your tax issues by acting as your legal agent in front of the IRS. So we're going to step into your shoes uh, in order to try to um, alleviate all those nightmares that you're having. And we're gonna be able to hopefully uh, get you to, to a place where you're gonna be happy um, uh, based on the tax resolution that we are able to, uh, and we're able to negotiate on your behalf with the IRS. So in our situation, normally we get a call or an email from a, um, a potential client who, you know, happens to have some um, uh, debt that they owe the IRS. It could be a, an individual. It could be a small business owner. Uh, the rules of engagement totally change when you go from being an individual that owes money to the IRS to someone that happens to be a small business owner because there are different rules that apply. Uh, normally, in that situation, the, the client uh, schedules a, a Zoom uh, video conference uh, with us. And that could be anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on the complexity of the issues. Uh, and then, obviously, we're going to send out uh, information to the client. They're going to sign an agreement with us. And we're going to start doing our due diligence. And that includes, you know, the client is going to sign either an 8821 uh, IRS form that gives us, Gables Tax Planning Group, the ability to uh, contact the IRS on, on behalf of the client and get all the information that we need. Uh, many a times, if the client is going to fully engage us and we secure a uh, what is known as a POA, a uh, power of attorney, because now we have the ability to get all the same information that you would normally get in an 8121, 8821, but also uh, we're able to represent the client. And, and once the IRS receives the signed and the signed and completed um, uh, IRS 2848 power of attorney form, uh, then they have the ability and they have the they have the obligation to talk to us uh, in your representation. So that's important to understand because that's how it works. Now, once we we obtain either the 8821 or the uh, 2848 then we're going to send out to the IRS a request so they can, and we do this electronically, so they can, so we have the ability to download all of the transcripts uh, that the client has had filed in the past. One of the biggest challenges that I see whenever I engage a client is that many times, you know, they owe money for multiple years. Uh, very seldom do I get a client that just owes for one year, one year. And on top of that, not only is the fact that they owe for several years, but also many of them have not filed taxes uh, in the last two, three, four, five years. So uh, one of the things that I caution all the clients on is the fact that before we can uh, go forward and try to negotiate with the IRS, 
we have to bring you current, meaning that if you owe, if you have not filed taxes over the last four years, we have to file taxes for those four years and then bring you current. Because unless you are current, current, the IRS is going to demand a lump sum payment and you're not going to be able to negotiate with them in any way, shape or form. So it's important that you understand that. Now, sometimes, uh, sadly enough, if the client has not filed for a number of years, they may not have a lot of information available. So we may have to go back to the IRS and get copies of W-2s and 1099s if the client's no longer, if the client, if the client no longer has it uh, at their disposal, uh, because we want to try to do the best, the best job we possibly can in filing those taxes, and then uh, being able to determine what the next steps uh, should be. Now, once we obtain all the transcripts from the IRS, uh, and that includes um, uh, payroll taxes that may be owed and so forth, and that's a different uh, structure and a different ballgame altogether, then we're going to formulate uh, with a client a plan of attack. Uh, which way are we going to go? Are we going to go for a, um, a CNC or currently not, co not collectible uh, because of the client's financial situation at this point in time? Or currently, are we going to go for an installment agreement? Are we going to go for a partial installment agreement? Are we going to go for an offering compromise? Um, uh, do we have to bring in an attorney that specializes in bankruptcy uh, in order to, to determine whether bankruptcy may be suitable? Uh, from, uh, from what we do at Gables, we have the ability to let the attorneys know you know, what percentage of that debt may be uh, discharged uh, in bankruptcy uh, based on the CSET. The CSET uh, is the collection statute expiration date, which is extremely, extremely important when it comes to negotiating with the IRS. If you don't know uh, what the CSET is for each and every one of those years that you owe taxes to the IRS, um, you're, you're being totally blinded and chances are you're not going to succeed. And we're not going to move forward with you until we understand exactly where you're at in your debt process and what are some of the tools that we may have available uh, in order to, to help you and negotiate uh, on your behalf. Now, once we go through that process, obviously we're gonna uh, complete all the forms that you need to submit depending on what it is that we're going to do. Uh, financial statements are often required, uh, whether you're an individual or you're a business, whether it's a 433A, IRS Form 433A or IRS Form 433B or other type of 433 form, uh, depending on your circumstances. And we're going to have to complete all of those forms. The completion of those forms are going to be paramount. And they have to be perfect. And that's where the accounting background comes into play. Because when we submit your package uh, to the IRS, um, they're going to look at that information. Obviously, they're going to compare that to what they have in their files, and then we're going to be able to start the negotiation process. Depending on what it is that we're doing, if we're doing installment agreements, you know, it could take a few months uh, just to be able to get an installment agreement approved, and then obviously we have to negotiate on the time period to to pay the installment agreement. Uh, if it's something like an offer and compromise, uh, the IRS has up 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 to two years uh, in order to make a determination as to whether they're going to approve your offer and compromise or not. You know, for most individuals that may want to file uh, all of this paperwork by themselves, and I don't recommend it because, you know, that's like bringing a knife to, to a gunfight and you're going to lose 100% of the time. Um, you have to be very careful when you do so uh, because otherwise, uh, you're going to be leaving your, yourself um, uh, open uh, when it comes to opportunities that you may have within the whole realm of tax resolution planning. So uh, it's, it's quite complex. Uh, you need uh, uh, someone that specializes in tax resolution planning. Uh, some of your larger CPA firms do have the ability to do that. They have specific departments just for that. Uh, they can get quite expensive uh, from a business standpoint. Uh, so it really depends on what it is that you're looking for. How comfortable do you feel with the person that you're talking to? 
and uh, and then obviously uh, the ultimate decision is um, uh, which way to go and how to get there. So um, just wanted to take a few minutes of your time to share, you know, what the planning, what the tax resolution planning process is, um, and and don't hesitate to reach out if you want to uh, get a hold of me. My name again is Bert B E R T Salazar S A L A Z A R. Uh, my telephone number is uh, 305-304-4770. You can also reach out to me via email at bert, B-E-R-T, at gablestaxgroup.com. Uh, and we'll be more than happy to schedule a, a call with you uh, and take um, uh, information from you and take your situation to the next level. And always remember that our goal here at the Gables Tax Planning Group is to kind of help you change uh, the way that you see things, because when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see change. So once again, thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.